everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing doing these short horror films that we found out tonight on YouTube. This one is called The Changing Room. Let's get it. Well, I'm looking forward to this. We've had some absolutely brilliant ones on the on the channel tonight. Let's go. That weird mirror effect. I tell you what, that is good filming that. Because they're not catching the cameraman in that mirror. That is really good filming. Ooh. You see the mirror then? That was weird, wasn't it? Mirror's moving. Hey, that's, this looks good. You've locked it! That's very like the grudge, the ring, and a lot of those Japanese like horror films that was remade. Oh my god, I really enjoyed these little short horror films. Let's go! Please, please open the door! Please! That's brilliant! Please, please! Smash the mirror! Look at that in the phone. Oh, 
Oh my god! Holy sugar! I think that one deserved an award. How good was that? I'm shocked to see something that good on like an independent channel where like someone's made that themselves without like the Hollywood production. Oh my God, that was awesome. There's a making there of that. I'm going to have to check that out on, a, on another day. You know what? No, we'll, we'll check it out now. We'll check out the making. Oh no, they did the, the mirror bit. Right, okay. Let's check this out. <laughs> Good job. Hey guys, this is Sam Evenson, the director of The Changing Room and the creator of Grimoire Horror. That was A lot brilliant. of people were wondering how we pulled off the mirror effects in The Changing yeah. Room. There's a lot of impossible shots, an invisible cameraman, and some physics-breaking supernatural shenanigans. And that's what I was saying. The cameraman's good because you can't see what's actually happening. So while there was definitely a lot of VFX involved, you might be surprised to find out that a lot of it was practical. So here's a look behind the scenes at how we created the mirror box. Right, okay. Mirrors are one of the most overused tropes in horror, so I really wanted to add something new to the genre. An entity that can move through planes of an infinity reflection is something I'd never seen before, and I was really excited to solve this creative challenge. Wow. I toyed with a few VFX intensive ways on how to make it work, but landed on a more practical solution. Two-way mirrors. A two-way mirror allows you to see through one side, but not the other, right. as long as one side is brighter than the other. It does this by using- Ah, uh, that's how the cameraman didn't get seen then. Because he's on the other side of the mirror where you can't see through. Oh, okay, okay. A metallic layer between the glass that allows a certain amount of light to pass through while the rest is reflected. So if there's more light coming from your side, you can see your own reflection only. But if the light comes to the other side, it'll work more like a window. than a Yeah. Mirror. By using two two-way mirrors, I figured we'd be able to plant the cameraman invisibly right behind the glass and shoot yeah. straight down the infinity reflection. Since this meant we'd need to build a set, I designed the whole thing in Blender first so I knew what dimensions I'd need to achieve the kind of framing I wanted. I did a walkthrough with our DP, Drew Gardella, virtually, where we were able to set up shots, decide which lenses we would need, and figure out lighting solutions before ever stepping on set. Okay. I then created a shot-by-shot -shot storyboard and shot list. Producer Jamie Stevens and I then got to work creating a schedule, getting materials, and assembling our team. We rented a studio space to build the set in and hired a local builder to assemble it based off my blueprints of the room so right. we could easily remove the walls and mirrors to get the shots we needed. The build went pretty smooth, but I've never felt more anxious in my entire life than driving these two giant mirrors to set and carefully installing them. One mistake and the whole film would have shattered. Caveman repair service. My mom would kill me if I did this to like our home. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to make it look old, aren't they? Some interesting quirks we noticed immediately were that the mirrors weren't perfectly flat, so it created a warping effect in the corner. Yeah. I actually think this is pretty cool looking, it is cool. especially paired with the green shifting of the light, and it adds a really otherworldly kind of quality to the reflections. We had the glass shop give us a few smaller cuts of the mirror to use as a camera filter. To match the exact exposure and right. quality of light that we see. Right. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Actress Jamie Ballesta's non VFX shots first, while the talented SFX artist Mandy Mossman spent a couple hours getting our hanged man, Alan Maxson, roughed up. For the shots where the hangman would show up later, we made sure to record the camera, height, lenses, and angle so we could match it on the VFX plates and maintain the correct perspectives. When it was time for the hanged man scenes, we removed the mirrors from the wall and shot right. him moving into the room with a blue screen backdrop. That made him it was important to have him interacting with the physical set so it would be visually consistent when compositing him into the reflections later. Yeah. We shot his hanging scenes with him standing and falling off of a block just to make sure that we didn't have to do any sort of dangerous rigging. We ran out of time on location to get Jamie's hanging scene, so we did a pickup shot at my friend Claire's apartment with her circus suspension rig where she helped coach this final stunt. That's well no one good. was hurt, but my creative partner, McGuffin, was very concerned. 
For post, I edited the film in DaVinci Resolve, and once the cut was in a good place, I exported all the VFX shots into Nuke. Nuke is a node-based workflow, which can be confusing if you're used to using layer-based systems like After Effects right. or Photoshop, but the techniques I use here can be replicated in any compositing package. For the reveal shot, I tracked the hanging footage onto the mirror and matched this is the interesting to me, this. warping to have him sit naturally and deep into the reflection. Yeah. For the bit where he falls down, I had to do a bit of stitching on the rope to get the right length and speed. Yeah. I realized that we really needed a close-up over the shoulder shot for the yeah. moments leading up to a run to the door. This was something that we actually didn't shoot, so I created this shot by punching in on this clean plate of the reflection, then rotoing out Jamie from this wider shot and layering her back in with different perspective and some fake depth of field to make it look like we shot with a longer lens. Right. See, that's interesting to me, the way they're shooting this. And like I say, I was dead confused how they was getting the guy to climb over the um, the reflection of the, the boards at the bottom of the mirror. But it's just the same shot repeated over and over. He did a few shots over the same bit, but they just VFX it in. That's really, really innovative. Some fake depth of field to make it look like we shot with a longer lens. The ceiling was full CG made in Blender. I wanted to have this little rail move where the man was hanging in his own world to show the supernatural connection to ours. Yeah. I also like that it finished that closed-in, grimy kind of feeling with the fluorescent lights and more. That looks really good. Tiles. The crawling shot was the same idea as the hanging ones, but with a lot more manual tracking and warping and painting on the interaction points. Yeah. For the final shot, I did a 3D camera track on the pullout, then reprojected the walls into 3D planes so we could have it feel like the camera was pulling back through the reflections. I then did the blue screen comp on her swinging in and used a light rays effect on her to create an interactive ah. shadows that shows in the room where she swings, which yeah. I think really helped sell her presence in that particular reflection yeah. compared to the ones around it. There were a few more minor effects like paint outs. There was a CG sign in the shop, a little mirror wobble that I added, and yeah. a few inevitable reflections that were caught on the backside of the mirror glass. Once this was all together, I sent it to my composer friend, Aaron Drake. We wanted to use some unique sounds that created an eerie glassy feel to give the reflection more of a character. He was able to come up with some really sick stuff using steel yeah. drums. Once we had all of this audio, we sent it to... I've, I've never seen the process of making audio like this. I always just thought that people grabbed, like, samples or they grabbed, like, um, like they would go on Epidemic Sound or, or things like that just to use there. You know, once you've paid for it, you can use it for free, can't you? Right. Okay. This is interesting. ...feel to give the reflection more of a character. He was able to come up with some really sick stuff using steel drums. Once we had all of this audio, we sent it to my friend Toby Mason to do the final mixing and sound design. Right. And then the final color was done by Asa Fox in Resolve. And that about sums up post-production. Thanks so much for watching this, guys. This is the first BTS thing that I've done. So if there's wow. something you really liked about it or if you have any other questions, uh, make sure to post in the comments and I'll try to respond to you. Like and subscribe. I'll be coming out with more original horror and filmmaking videos soon. Take care. What did you guys think of that then? Seeing the process? I mean, I was I was baffled because obviously, I, even during the changing room film, I said, how have they done that with a cameraman? Not, it didn't even think about two-way mirrors. And then to have nothing in one side and the man with the noose on his neck climbing over the boards, I was, I was thinking, how the hell has he done this? And then when you watch it back and you see all the, the different layers they're putting and, and the CGI and stuff, it was like, that was cool. And like I like say all that film that one little square that they built. I'm, I'm impressed. I am very very impressed. Right, what did you guys think of this? Let me know in the comments. And if you like my videos, then please hit like and subscribe. And I shall see you all in the next video.